Welcome everybody, Chris Petri here. Hey, thanks for coming by. We're going to do another exciting watercolor and uh, we're going to do all the methods, all the techniques that uh, you'll need to accomplish this painting. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty simple. It's more of a two-dimensional look to it, so there's not a lot of uh, serious angles and things like that. We'll get all into it next, so just keep watching. Stick to this uh, video. Follow it all the way through. Take some notes if you have to. Um, this will be the finished painting, and you can work from this right here. So if you want to work from this painting right here, that's fine too. But you'll see everything, the sketch. You'll see all the steps to the painting, the glazing approach we're using right now. So we're using the glazing technique. And uh, so let's take a little zoom back here. And again, feel free to work from this. I'll leave this on for just about 20, 30 seconds so you have a chance to uh, hit pause or take a picture or screen capture. Okay, hello again. We're just getting started back up again here. Um, we just saw the finished painting. Uh, we went over all the different uh, details uh, of how to create um, a nice, uh, simple composition like we did with the um, just a simple uh, house uh, style um, painting, you know, with a, some landscape, fe you know, features, some grass, some hills, a little bit of trees, a uh, nice sky, and an overall pleasing composition where we kind of showed how using the glazing technique is a really powerful way to kind of unify your entire painting to give it kind of like a glow or an excitement of just uh, everything blending together for like a very calm, peaceful looking painting. Uh, most of the time I paint a la prima, which I really, that's my favorite way to paint, but glazing is just, a, is just as interesting and exciting and a lot of artists use it, a lot of watercolor artists use it, and it even probably uh, the glazing technique can actually, you know, be more like um, resemble oil painting sometimes a little more than, let's say, doing a la prima painting when you're doing watercolors. Because um, you might be using more like grayed down colors and things like that and uh, washes where you're mixing more, uh, you know, mixing colors a little bit more and so on versus using like more uh, straight paint. So in any case, you're the artist. You figure out what you like, you look at different artists, you look at different pictures, you get all your information, you just keep working and working and working and practicing and you'll just get there. You'll find eventually what you like. Um, so here I'm hoping to show you the glazing technique, which is great. Um, and I, arches uh, blocks are great. You can see this is a, a block, arches block rough paper. It's the uh, orange cover. So all you gotta do is when you find arches paper, you just look for the orange block like this. And this is it, the orange block. And what's great about the block paper, if you're doing glazing technique where you, you're going to use a lot of water, uh, like we did in this painting, um, the, the reason the block is so effective is your page stays glued down to the rest of this pad. So once you're done putting a lot of water on the paper, and it all buckles and gets all bubbly, you know how the water paper, paper just gets all buckled, and, you know, it, that happens on your block paper, but what the beauty of the block is, when you let that dry for like an hour or two, it goes back to its original state of being completely flat on your surface. So when you go back in to paint over your original first wash with the really uh, heavy amounts of water and, and, and light washes, when you go over to do your, over, you know, your next coat of paint or your next glazing of paint, your paper's going right back to that perfectly flat state, which is what you want, right? You like that nice flat paper. You don't want to have buckles and bubbles everywhere. So this is the solution. The arches blocks, gummed blocks like this, absolutely cure the problem of buckled paper. So all you do is you paint on your first glazing like we're going to show in just a second. After that, you let that dry 100% until that paper's completely flat or almost completely flat and then you're ready to go for your second glazing and finish up your painting. And it's a beautiful way to paint. And I'll show you here, like this is a, one of the paintings I did just, you know, a couple months ago on YouTube. We did a nice little window scene here. Um, you just take, it's very simple. When you're done with, completely done with your painting and you wanna like put it in a frame or take it out and just, you know, pin it up on your wall, tape it up. 
uh, give it as a gift to someone, maybe make a card out of it or something, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's simple. You just take your pen knife, like a nice Swiss Army knife, and you just trim around the you trim around the uh, the edges of it inside that inside the uh, like this. And you just go right around. Switch around here, and we do the same thing. We just go right around. We just take our pen knife and we just carefully angle it on a 45 degree angle. It cuts the best like this. Sometimes, in the past, I've gone off a little gone off a little bit on my uh, trimming and then it winds up tearing the paper at the edges. So if you just keep that good sharp pen knife uh, on a 45 degree angle and you go nice and slow and just work it, be careful to go real slow and you just keep trimming around until that's it. You have a perfect sheet of paper like that with your painting on it. And then you're ready to frame it or uh, pin it up or put it into a, a book. You might want to have uh, one of those uh, hole punchers. You can punch out some holes on your paintings and put them in a nice binder. Keep track of your paintings. Just keep uh, stockpiling them and you can look back and reference them. So we'll put that over here on the side. And, and you're ready to start another with the block again. The arches block here. You're ready to start another painting. You got the block. This is where you would, uh, when you're all finished 100% with your painting and everything's 100% dry, that's when you, you'll you go in here with your pen knife and just start uh, trimming around and, and then removing your next page off the uh, block. But if you just leave the block as it is, uh, if you leave the block as it is, just like this, we paint on this. And if it buckles when we're putting on lots of water, no problem. We let this dry for an hour or two, come back in an hour or two, and that pa page is going to be complete. Your watercolor, uh, watercolor paper is going to be completely flat. So you can go over with your next uh, overwashes and your over uh, over glazing to, um, you know, to get your painting completed, and it's going to be easy because you're not dealing with all kinds of bubbles in your paper. So that's the workaround for anyone that's having problems with bu buckling paper, bubbles, and all kinds of things like that on your watercolor paper. You buy the blocks. They're a little bit, uh, you know, you might use this for your finished paintings. You might not want to practice on this, but you would definitely want to use this for your finished watercolor art. If you're going to be going into a gallery show or you're going to be doing some, you know, uh, showing of your work and you want to frame these things and you want to really have an easy time painting and creating your paintings, absolutely the way to go. So I'm going to set this up like so. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break. We'll come right back and we'll start the drawing and we'll get started. All right, be right back. Okay, we're back and we are ready to start our drawing phase here. Let's do our preliminary sketch and then we'll get into our drawing. Um, on this one, we might it might be kind of more of a simple drawing where we don't have to do a contour drawing. We could just do like our basic preliminary sketch first, you know, lay things out and we might just be good to go and we can start painting. Let's see how it goes. Always remain flexible. Remember that in watercolors, be flexible when you're creating your artwork, when you're drawing your painting, be willing to just have a good time, be flexible. You can always start a new painting. There's no worries about it. Um, key thing is just keep working at it. Keep practicing. Have a lot of fun time just doing little small uh, swatches and little practice exercises, you know, paint an apple, paint an orange, uh, you know, paint a couple flowers in a vase, you know, have some fun just doing little practice exercises. Those are really tremendously helpful. Uh, you really get used to watercolor uh, in the medium by just doing small exercises. Then when you get into a larger uh, painting, you feel more comfortable. You're used to the medium, you know how it kind of works, you have the feel for it. So just keep working at it. Some of you I know are beginners. Some are pros at it already. So I'm just, you know, kind of preaching to the choir here. But let's uh, get started here. First thing I'll do is I just want to get my uh, tape. I'm going to use some artist tape, uh, drafting tape. Um, you can use draft, drafting tape, artist tape. This is uh, 3M tape, which is really excellent. 3M. Uh, 3M, it's drafting tape pretty much. Or this, yeah, this, or this is actually scotch, scotch tape, drafting tape. This works really great. And we're just going to make a nice border around our our, uh, our 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 block. We're using Arches Rough paper, the orange page. The cover page is orange, Ar Arches Rough paper. 
excellent. It's it's a gummed block paper, so you have a great time of painting. You can put lots of tons of water on your your paper for your first wash. Your glazing technique, tons of water on there. The water's gonna or the paper's gonna buckle, or go all over the place. No big deal. A couple hours later, might take a little more than a couple hours. It'll be back to uh, perfect working condition. It'll be nice and flat, back nice and flat on top of this page here. That's what you want. You want to have it, the paper flat, easier to work on, much easier than trying to work work on uh, buckled paper. There's nothing worse, really. For me, every artist is different. Some artists do not mind working on buckled paper. That's fine, too. I sometimes do as well. Depends on what I'm doing, what kind of style of work we're doing. But let's... Okay, we have our paper taped down. And we always make sure to really, if we can... I always like to really make sure that this, this bottom, this portion, the tape down here, is really sealed well. So I'll go over an extra little bit with a a tip of a watercolor brush just to seal that bottom tape there, that that uh, portion of the tape, because that's where the water is going to keep dripping down and sitting there, and we don't want it to drip underneath the border. If, if we can, it'd be better if we could just keep that nice crisp white um, uh, frame around our painting with our tape. That works great. It looks really good. If you take this painting when you're completely done, 100%, com you know, and you take it out and trim it off your block, it already has a really beautiful border around it, a nice white mat almost. And you can pin it up on a wall and it looks just great. So we're going to continue on here. We have our tape. Let's start our sketch. And we're going to use just a mechanical pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a reference photo, but it's someone else's artwork. So I work from other people's artwork all the time. I think it really helps uh, to paint from other people's work because you're looking at exactly the same colors they're using. And essentially when you're looking at a painting, you're seeing the techniques, even though you might not have have them listed out. When you're looking at a painting, you're sort of, in your mind, you're look, looking at the painting of someone else's work and you're kind of saying to yourself, hmm, how did they do that? Oh, well, I can see this, I can see that. So as you look at other people's paintings and you paint from those paintings, you're actually gonna start to kind of critically look at everything and and kind of pick up on things so that when you're going in to do your painting, you're going to be trying to do the same idea, the same, get the same look. So that's important. Um, and sometimes too, it's fun just to do your own, your own look, what you want to do and not have to worry about, you know, maybe copying someone else's techniques or whatever. But in a general sense, if you are looking at someone else's paintings that you really enjoy and think are great looking, that's fantastic. You'll you'll learn a lot from just trying to work from their work because you'll be trying to do the same thing, copy it, and you'll learn from that tremendously. So let's do it. Let's do a, a, just a simple drawing. Uh, let's see here. We'll do a house here. And we're going to have some... This is going to be like a hill, so we're going to have a hill. And there's some, we'll have lots of grass, weeds, all kinds of interesting stuff over here. And then we're going to go with our house. Let's do our roof area. And, okay, so we have the, the roof line here. And I'm just going to go over about, well, this is about halfway here on the paper. So I'm going to, let me turn down that light a, a little bit. Okay, I hope everyone can see the pencil lines here. Maybe I'll go over the pencil lines a second time. And then we're going to. Okay, so we're going to just remember this roof, the eave of this roof here is going to go over to here. And then we're going to have another...
All right, that's all we have to do. This is kind of simple, right? So we we basically just made almost like two two sections of a house, left and right side. So this is a nice, really cool uh, feature here of the uh, house. It's got two sections. There's a roof here, a gable roof, just a simple uh, A-frame roof like that. Uh, and the same thing over here, another A-frame roof, a gable roof here. And um, if anything, sometimes if you think you, you might have, have an angle wrong or something like that, that's no problem. You can start again. Um, let's just uh, have a good time with this. I'm not going to worry so much. I just want to get the uh, basic uh, techniques of everything. And then let's do a window over here. Let's do a window there. And another window over here. Like that. And let's do the same thing. Let's do a window over here. And then maybe another window over here. Maybe a, a door down here, first floor. Okay, so now we did a door and some windows. Simple drawing. And the fun thing we're going to do here is we're going to try to just use the glazing technique and really get some beautiful wash on here. And then once that's completely 100% dry, we're going to come back and do our overwashes. So let's remember, we're going to have uh, fun here. We're going to mix up some real beautiful washes here and use a large brush and just get the paint on and uh, see how it goes. We're just going to have a, a good time of getting some really good wet washes all on the top of this. Our first uh, wash, our first glazing, and we'll see how it goes, but I think you're really going to enjoy this. And uh, we can also, uh, bef let's do, uh, maybe we'll do something, uh, maybe we'll do a chimney here. So we could do a chimney there. And then maybe another chimney over here. So we'll do two chimneys too on top to make it a little more interesting so that when we're looking at this painting we're going to kind of see some interesting uh, interruptions in this line that's going across with some chimneys. That looks good. Uh, we might do a uh, maybe a... We'll do an um, antenna, a TV antenna there too. Okay, and perfect time for another break. And I, I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, just hit that subscribe button right below this uh, screen here, right to the uh, this side here, just below the screen. You'll see a little red button, subscribe. You click that, you'll be you know you'll be notified each new video that comes out that we do here on uh, my channel. You'll be alerted. You can check it out. Maybe watch the first minute or two if you think you'll like it. You can watch it, you know, and work along with us. Or if you're not so interested and you might want to wait till another video we have. Maybe it's something that you might like more, like flower paintings or seascapes. Uh, you could just wait for the next one. But if you, if you stick with this channel, you're always going to find something you like in the watercolor medium. And we're always working in watercolors here. So, um, and we're also doing some techniques and some interesting studies too along the way, just to keep ourselves, uh, you know, strong in our fundamental knowledge of watercolor and the techniques, the design of paintings, the colors, the little, uh, nuances of watercolor that are really important to learn. So you're always going to learn that here. So come on back, hit that subscribe button. If you hit the notification bell, which is right next to the um, subscribe button, that means you'll actually be alerted on your uh, phone or your laptop or your computer that we're just made a new video and you can check it out. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we're starting back up again. Never, always remember if you need to adjust your uh, drawing before you start painting, you can do that. Let's do that here. 
I noticed my uh, roof is could be a little better. I went off on one of my angles a little bit. So always, it seems to me that when you actually take a break, uh, you know, every 20 minutes, half an hour when you're painting, you'll come back and you'll maybe see things you didn't see when you were kind of working. Because it really is true that our concentration only lasts so long. Usually about 15, 20 minutes, our concentration starts to lessen and decrease. So when we lose our concentration, sometimes I notice myself anyway, I, I, I go off on some of my lines sometimes and, uh, you know, my lines don't look as good or I miss some angles and that's what happened here. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'm going to just erase a little bit of the roof angle here so I can get more of a realistic look to the roof. So let me do that. Um, I'm just going to do that, a little bit of a change there. And I think that looks a little better, a little more of an angle on that. And then once we paint this in with darker paint, we won't see the pencil lines or any of the corrections we made. So no, no worries on that uh, portion. And uh, all right, let's uh, start painting. So what I'll do here is, let me tape down my palette. I always tape down my palette when I'm working, especially on YouTube. I think it's kind of annoying to see something moving around on camera. So we'll just tape this down. I think for this wash we could use a square brush. I'm going to use a, a Da Vinci uh, a flat brush or a square brush like this. It's a um, num it's a 30, a number 30 on the uh, metal portion of the uh, brush. It's a synthetic uh, flat brush. So we'll use that. If you want, you can mix up the uh, paints with a round brush so that it's a little easier to mix up the paints. So we're going to do a color um, a color scheme that we're going to have some raw umber, uh, cerulean blue. So we're going to get lots of cerulean blue in there. Raw umber, cerulean blue. Um, what else will we we'll, maybe some Maybe some raw sienna. Raw sienna is a little more is trans more is transparent. Yellow ochre is a little more opaque, so that might be something we want to kind of keep an eye on. Let's keep keep our washes maybe a little more uh, transparent. Okay, so we got the raw umber here, cerulean blue, maybe a little bit of uh, purple, ultramarine violet, maybe we'll put some ultramarine violet down here. Nice atmospheric type color. So with these colors, real simple, basically raw sienna, raw umber, cerulean blue, and then a little bit of purple, ultramarine violet I use, Windsor Newton. That'll be a really nice uh, first wash over the whole painting. Now what I'm going to do is, once I figure out my colors, then I say to myself, self, how much am I going to need of this, these washes? And then I say, I'm going to need more than what I have here. So let me add more paint and more water because I don't want to run out in the middle of doing my painting or my glazing. So when you're doing glazing paintings like this, it's real important that you mix up enough for a little extra. Does that make sense? So that um, uh, when we're doing our glazing, we don't run out of paint and then you have to start mixing and you might have an issue trying to mix some paints quickly to try to get it all in on one wash. So let me adjust my phone here a little bit. I'm having an issue with the thing shutting off here. Let's do this. OK, 
Okay. So again, I'm going to make sure I have plenty of paint, plenty of washes mixed. And here you can see lots of water, lots of water, but not excessive, just enough to mix our washes. There we go. And lots of purple. So you see, that's what we have here. Now, we use the round brush to mix the washes, put them out into the palette. Now we have our uh, flat brush. We'll use that to paint it into the painting here. So, let's start with a little, I'm gonna mix all these three and some of this. Then a little bit of water I add to it from the pail, the water bucket. Blue, cerulean blue. And remember we're getting just the first glazing on here. We're not going too crazy worrying about um, see I'm just doing like X's so we can just work with the X brush technique you know just get some X's on there then what you can do is once we're done with these glazings we can go in and maybe use a tissue and blot up a little bit of paint if we want to in certain areas to maybe lighten it up a little bit. But you can kind of see we have more purple on the bottom of the painting, I think. But I'm just using the same colors and just, that's all. We're done. There we go. How simple is that? A nice, beautiful light wash of our colors we just put out in the palette. Then what we do is we say, all right, let's go in with a tissue, get a clean tissue and say, oh, let me have some lights and maybe a few of the windows, or maybe one window, maybe with this window here. And you lift up and look at that. Oh, beautiful. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Another little bit there. Lift it up with your tissue. This will leave dark. Door, we're gonna leave dark there. And I think that's it. If we add that little bit of light right there in this window, we're, that's going to be really nice. We're going to make some dark shadows and we're going to pretend we can see through this window, through another window on the other side of this wall. So we're actually making it like three-dimensional where you're seeing through this area of the house to the other side of this and the sky color on the other side. So maybe let's add a little sky color here. Take my round brush. There we go. Look at that. A little sky color, just an additional blue, cerulean blue wash in that window. Once we lightened it up, we just took a tissue, blotted up some of that wash we just did, add a little cerulean blue in there, and that automatically keys you in on the fact that you're looking add some sky color uh, through this building and you'll see how we're going to make this uh, window here when we're creating our second wash our second glazing you'll see how we're going to do that we're going to create a see-through window here where you're going to see through the building and then onto the other side of the um, painting on the other side of this section of this house which will give you that real beautiful see-through three-dimensional feel to your painting that adds a really big bit of interest to your paintings but now it's just let's wait we have to wait till this dries 100 percent until your paper goes completely flat again uh, and that might take an hour or two you can use a blow dryer that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take a break now turn on the blow dryer and see if i can uh, dry this up a bit the wash but it looks better if you let it dry naturally obviously because the, the actual washes will slowly go into the paper and create a nice beautiful uh, effect of um, three-dimensionality into your paper. If you blow dry it, it's going to dry quickly and it won't, uh, the, the wash won't 
penetrate into the paper as much and it doesn't look as good. So if you want a really beautiful look, let it dry naturally for a couple hours or so, or overnight. If you don't mind and you're just doing this as a practice exercise, by all means use a blow dryer and dry it up quick and we can start on the next uh, glazing, the second wash going over the top of this. So I just dried up some of the washes around the tape. Okay, we'll be right back and we'll have more fun doing that second glazing. You're going to see how this really comes together and looks absolutely phenomenal once we get those second glazings on those darker washes. Hey, it's Chris and we're back. We took a break. We let the paper dry. Now this paper, like I said, the longer you wait, maybe like two, three, four hours, it'll it'll be completely flat for you. This looks pretty good. This is a, a tiny bit buckled, but, but hardly at all. So this is like fine to start working on it again. So that's what we're going to do here. And uh, we have some left leftover uh, washes in our palette. Purple down here. So we can we can reuse these mixes as you can see I'm going to reuse these because we're going with a really dark wash over the top of this So now we're going to make a uh, wash for the roof. Let's do the roofs So let's go with burnt umber French ultramarine a little bit of French ultramarine burnt umber Burnt sienna let's mix all kinds of interesting colors um, but mostly let's stick to the colors we used to start with. Raw Umber, Cerulean Blue, Purple, Purple, and then you can introduce a little bit of Burnt Umber into that and a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue maybe, and a little more extra French Ultramarine Blue. Let's try that, see how that looks. Just trying to mix mix it up on the brush here because <clears throat> okay and this is the great thing about the square brush the flat brush you can get great looking flat washes like this let some so look at how quick we go two. Basically, in two passes of the brush, we've got that entire roof done. Does that not look great? And it's... Looks great. We got a lot accomplished in just a few brush strokes. Let's go over here and let's do the other side. Like that. And let's keep going. Let's get the other side here of the... We're seeing just a little bit of the, the other side of this wall here. The shadow side of this wall. And we just use that flat brush like that. Look at that. Perfect, perfect. Look at that. Excellent. Okay. You can see how using a, a flat brush like this, and this is like about an inch and a half wide. Uh, let's see, do we have a tape measure around here? This is an inch wide. So this brush is just a little bit more than an inch wide. So if you're using that, this size brush, you can really cover a lot of ground quickly. And uh, you'll have more fun with your watercolors and less stress because you're getting more completed. Let's do that. Let's keep picking up the same wash we just used over here on the left side. We're just going over here to the right side. And we'll get the rest of our um, Roof washes completed. Make sure to use your um, original colors mostly. The raw umber, 
the uh, blue there we go look at that so now we've completed our roof tops here We did the shadows over here, and we'll continue working on this. Um, let's work on the uh, foreground here. Let's use these colors, so we're going to stick right here with these. Again, we're trying to like, basically if this makes sense, we're trying to use the same colors repeating over and over and over, no matter what section we're working in on this painting, we always want to keep using the same colors to keep the whole painting unified so that you're seeing the same colors everywhere. So the first wash, again, the first glazing, we're using the glazing technique, you're seeing the lighter versions of all the same colors. Then when we're getting into the darker colors, the darker tonal values, if you want to say, or darker tones, it's going to be the same colors, just more paint, less water, and we're doing the same thing. We're making sure we use the same the same uh, pigment, the same colors, over and over as we keep getting the darker uh, tonal values uh, in the painting completed. So here we're going to do some, now we're going to add uh, some green to the, to the mix here. Let's use some sap green, but, but a lot of the raw umber, so we're just adding a little bit of, of the green but lots of raw umber, which was the main color we were using before. And let's see if we can... We can get this in. So we're just going to do that. We're going to get lots of color on there. Don't worry about the... We're going to... Lots of raw umber mixed in with that little bit of sap green, some blue, cerulean blue, and again these colors here, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Scr scrub around, have a good time. Don't worry about it. Don't stress, just let's get the washes in. There we go. We're just covering the covering the paper with the brush. You know, move around the brush, different kind of strokes, X, you know, doing like some X's, some X strokes, like that. Now, we're going to get our round brush, number 12, is it number 10? 10 round watercolor brush, Da Vinci Maestro. Go in, grab the same colors, and let's splash around a little bit. Got to splash. Get some variety in there. Get some splashes along the... Like that. Burnt Umber. Now we're going to mix in some more. Burnt Umber. French Ultramarine Blue. More uh, Cerulean Blue. And then we just make some lines for the ground and the hills here to kind of just lead the eye through as if we're, we're trying to lead the eye of the viewer through this areas, through these areas. And if you make those lines like so, it's going to give you that feel of the, the hill. Maybe you can go darker down here at this lower portion. Raw umber, a little bit of sap green. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we are doing a good job here. So 
Splashing is effective. You can also take some tissue if you want and blot in a little bit of light. Just a few spots here and there, just to break up the monotony of the wash. There we go. You can also, I'm now looking around, I have my uh, Ron Ranson medium size hockey brush. Going to dampen it up a little bit. So I just dampen up my Ron Ranson hockey brush. And then we'll just sp splay out the the color of the uh, brush here is like so. Just get some color on there. And I'm just going to go in and get some more color like that. And then you see how we have the brush hairs like that. And then we can just do a little bit of here and there, a little though those brush strokes like that really you're painting thousands of weeds and grasses and, and just a few brush strokes like that. Then we go in, we get a little more darker, French ultramarine blue, sap green, and then we keep sticking with the same colors, cerulean blue, raw umber, got to have that in there. Try to keep that the predominant color in your mixes all the time. The original colors we started with that's all you have to remember, whatever original colors you started with, four or five different colors, keep those the predominant colors all the time when you're putting in different washes and and you will have a, a unified looking painting that looks really beautiful. And I'm just putting in some darker darks here. Not quite dark enough, let's go with burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, raw umber, that's better. I'm just trying to get some weeds and grasses in there. And that looks pretty good, I think. Just kind of, you know, here and there. That looks fine. Okay, now. Let's go back to our round brush, number 10, and then we go back in with our same colors, cerulean blue, raw umber, pick up a little bit of that burnt umber and French ultramarine blue to mix in there just to get it a little bit darker. And let's put a shadow on this, this wall here. That's all. Just some shadowing there. And then if you want to make it a little more interesting, you take a tissue and you blot up a few spots here and there, like that. Automatically when you make some changes to that uh, wash that's looking pretty consistent all throughout, you take it and you interrupt it with some tissue you'll find that you'll create a more interesting look to it. So it'll look like there's some light bouncing around, some shadows, and that'll be fine. Okay, now let's also create a little bit of shadowing underneath the eaves of the roof. So we're going to go with some more cerulean blue. A little bit of uh, purple. And let's just go across like that. And all that does is just let us know there's some light, 
some sunlight. It might be a hazy day. I think it's a hazy day right now. There's no bright sunlight. It's just hazy. But we do have shadows, and that's what you're seeing here. Light shadow under the eaves of the roof. All is well. And we can add a little raw sienna. Put some, put some raw sienna here and there in that shadow so that it interrupts the consistent pattern of the wash. And let's cover that there. And we can do a little lifting here and there. Okay, let's do some chimneys. Burnt umber, burnt sienna. A little bit of cerulean blue as well. Warm and cool, everywhere warm and cool. Always mix your warm and cools. Maybe we'll put in a little cadmium red. And I'll blend that in. If you think you went with too much cadmium red, you can always lift up with your tissue and then go back in with some more burnt sienna and relax that, that color a little bit, make it more mellow. And let's do over here, do this chimney. And again, a little more cadmium red. Let's make these stand out a little bit, make them look a little interesting, the chimneys. And maybe we'll mix a little darker colors for the for the chimney pots. Like that. And then we can, we can also add a little bit of, of that red here and there into the washes. These, this has to be dry though. You wouldn't want to add this into these roof washes unless you knew they were really, um, that wash was completely dry because it would really, disrupt and really make the wash uh, it would cause like really unpleasant looking uh, spots and marks so that's and then you can take this and unify the painting a little more add some of that red cadmium red and burnt sienna add that to the rest of the painting here and there like that you would just add it to the painting. This way we have a unified color scheme. 
Again, we're always trying to add the same colors over and over in our painting to give that unified effect. Just like that. All right, so we've accomplished a lot. Let's take a break again. I always mention, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Also the notification bell down to the right uh, next to the subscribe button. This way you get our new videos every week. If you're new to watercolors, this is a great place to come and learn a lot of new things. We always cover the basics here, so you're always getting the basics with our channel here uh, on YouTube. And if you're a pro and you've been painting for many years, maybe you're you know coming from a uh, oil background and you're trying to do some watercolor painting now, you'll learn a lot of the details of the watercolor technique here. Um, which is a lot different than when you work in oils. So whatever, or even if you're doing, pa if you've worked with pastels, and now you're coming and you're looking, no matter what medium you actually have worked in a lot, if you transition over to watercolors, this is just a great place. You come and you learn a lot. I'm always trying to put in as many details as I can in my videos as possible, so that you learn all of the really fine details of watercolor, the techniques, the methods, explaining the colors. Uh, and a lot of uh, design also we cover design so that you have a good basis for creating your paintings with uh, solid design principles so here you can see we have dominance this painting is a powerful example of dominance when you look at this painting you are confronted with a beautiful house bam it's right there it's in your face gorgeous look at that Versus, you know, other times you'll see artists, they, they paint a little house only like one inch by one inch size. And the rest of the painting is all, you know, fields and trees and things like that and sky wash. So here, I, I hope you understand, this is a, in a, a powerful example of dominance in your design. So we cover everything here. We cover the basics and fundamentals of watercolor and design, colors, techniques, everything. So come on back. We're going to finish up in a few minutes or so with our last bit of washes in the windows. We're going to do some exciting washes here in this window to create some powerful light and three-dimensional uh, uh, effects so that your uh, painting is going to look like it's got lots of depth and three-dimensional feel. So come on back in just a few minutes. We'll finish up this painting. And again, <clears throat> please subscribe. Uh, we're always having fun here every week, and as you know, um, we create paintings every single week here on my channel, so you'll always have interesting content to come back to over and over again. So, let's get back uh, into it in about five minutes. I'm going to take a five-minute break if it's okay. Please, let me take a five-minute break, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, you've made it. We're getting now the, close to the finish, finish line here, doing our details. I want to thank everyone, too, for coming into the uh, comments section of YouTube. For all those great comments, thanks, everyone, for the constant uh, uh, appreciation and uh, kind thoughts and, and messages you send me. Um, we have a lot of fun here. We do a lot of great work. We're going to continue on the uh, path of uh, learning more about watercolor. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, if you're uh, just starting to... Um, uh, find your find yourself in the watercolor medium and you're really you know starting to really get a great uh, handle on things or whether you're a pro and you've been painting for many years maybe you're coming from a different medium uh, like pastels or oils or acrylics or, or what have you we do everything watercolor here so I'm glad you're here uh, I'm sure you're doing a great job out there. It's just a matter of practicing, simple as that. We do our exercises here every week. We create compositions here, paintings. You can make these finished paintings that you can frame, put in your house, or give them as gifts. Or you can just work on these as practice work. So you're just, whatever videos you like and you think you want to work on, you just work on those. I know some of you might not like paintings like this. You might just like to watch for fun and you might like flower paintings more. So I'm always doing constantly new uh, videos with all types of uh, content and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, different subject matter. So we do flowers, we do seascapes, landscapes, boats, cityscapes, city scenes, 
We do uh, still life, figure work, portrait work. We do everything here. So anything watercolor, you come on by here, you can learn all the ideas, the techniques, the methods. You'll be fine. You'll pick up everything as you go. It's just always a slow process of learning new things each time you work. And over years and years of painting, you know, maybe one or two years, you've learned 20, 30 new techniques and methods. Your, your watercolor paintings are going to get a lot better. So this is just another fun way of learning. This happens to be a glazing technique where we're doing glazings. We put the first wash down and then we're using the same colors over and over in the painting, just making them more, uh, you know, darker. So we're using less water is really the essentially is the, the basics of it. We're using a lot of water for the first wash. We let that 100% completely dry. Now we're to the point where we're doing our overwashes. We're using less water, more, more paint, more pigment. So let's continue on. I think right here we're just re we're ready to do the uh, the window details. So I'll get a smaller brush. This is a number uh, number six, a Da Vinci travel brush. So let's use a, and I'm going to use the same colors as we've been using all along. So burnt umber and French ultramarine blue is a good base for the dark, but then we have to use our raw umber and cerulean blue because that's really the dominant colors we were using in the painting. So let's recall that we want to keep using the same colors that we've been using all along. So now let's add a darker dark, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and so we get a really, really nice dark, and then let's, we're going to have a fun time here. Look at that dark. Wow. You might be thinking, wow, what's, what's happening? Let's make this. dark dark like that and let's do the window pane here and let's do the same thing here like that Okay. And I add a little bit of wash to this just to give it a little bit of a, a wash, a little bit of a, some tonal value there. And all we're doing is just adding in the darks of the windows and the doors. So please work from my finished painting. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. We're making some really good darks here. It's darker over here on this window, so we're going to leave this darker. This is a little lighter. And we'll 
do the same thing up here, darker up here on the top. Like that. Darker up top, then we can go with a cerulean blue. And then more darks, burn umber, French ultramarine blue, raw umber. And we just keep going here, adding darks. And you'll be surprised how good this looks. Look at that. We're going to probably have to let the windows dry some for probably an hour. And then we can go in and actually do some beautiful highlights with some uh, simple uh, titanium white with a little touch of yellow ochre in the top of the uh, paint. So we just try to make this uh, titanium white with a little touch of uh, oh, yellow ochre in the top of the paint tube. And we'll do a couple little uh, highlights here and there to bring more light into the painting, more highlights. Um, so we'll do that, but it's got to dry 100% before you add in any of those highlights. So we're going to let this all 100% dry, but we can also do this here. Let's do our antenna. So we're going to do our antenna here. It's an old TV antenna, maybe before, this is before, this is in the 1980s, 1970s and 1980s. We had the old TV antennas. We have some interesting color up here and up here. Some more of the cadmium reds and the uh, burnt siennas. We can actually add some down here. There's no reason why we can't add some flowers. Let's let's add some flowers down here while we let this all dry, the windows dry. Let's just burnt sienna and some cadmium red. Put some of that in the brush, and we'll splash some on here, and maybe dab a little bit, so we just create like some flowers here, so there's a little bit of a flower bush, something here. We'll come back and do a little more interesting, uh, maybe something here too. So you create wherever, wherever you want to add this, you can add this. It's up to you. But not too much. Just a few spots here and there to uh, excite the uh, person that's looking at this. They're going to they're gonna look around the whole painting. They're not just going to get kind of stuck on one area. We're going we're gonna to have the person that's looking at this painting want to look around and kind of see, oh, there's some beautiful roofs and windows and... There's some, oh, chimneys, exciting color. Oh, down here, some flowers. So it's kind of a, 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 a game of trying to have your viewer that's looking at your painting look around the painting and kind of find some interesting details here and there and just look around and have a fun time looking through the painting. And, and you might have one spot that you might want to have the main focal point. That might be this window here. So the eye will, the person that's looking at the painting might say, okay, I'm looking around, some red flowers and chimneys and windows, and but they find this window here the most exciting part of the painting because you're kind of seeing through the building to the other side, which is really interesting. So let's hope that that's the case and we can uh, 
get the viewer to look at our painting and be excited by it. I'll do some some very minimal um, details here with the uh, needlepoint brush here. Again, this is more a couple details with the needlepoint brush is fine. We don't want to go with too many, many details, just enough. There we go, fine. Um, we might want to also add some some blue and purple to those flowers. And that'll kind of harmonize with the blue and purple that we've already used. So I'll mix up some blue and purple, cerulean blue and ultramarine violet. And I put that in there too. Maybe some more raw umber too, just to kind of blend it. Blend things together a little bit. And what else can we do? We can we can make some uh, bushes over here. And we make them a little bluer, cooler in color. It's in the distance. So that's all. could even add in some splashes over here and then introduce the um, French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Sap Green with our needlepoint brush and then we can just and we can make it a little darker Perfect. We have a little bit of a another interesting place the viewer can look and see over here some bushes and trees and and we can take a little color. Put some color in this window. It's a little bit light. And I just wanted to see if I can make that look more interesting. This doesn't look so great for some reason. It does not look the way I thought it would, so no problem. We'll take a little paint, and I'm just gonna go over that. Always remember you can change things in your painting if they don't look correct or something doesn't look proper. No big deal. You can change it around. Okay. 
we can still work and continue to work. Let's do some clapboard siding. We could just mix some of these here. Some of these washes of colors that we have. We'll keep it on the lighter side. You can see lots of water. And then let's do some, uh, just some very light lines for, we're pretending we're So, same here, and I'm just doing some real easy light lines just to note that there is some siding on here, some clapboard siding. Then in a few spots we go a little darker, so we add a little darker. That's all. Kind of add some interesting details here. And that really makes this much more interesting and exciting, having those clapboards on there. So remember, use that needlepoint brush you have and get those really fine clapboards in there. It just takes it to the next level, the painting, if you're going to add these clapboards in there. If you just left it, you know, the, the kind of plain white paper, you know, with the wash on there, it looks good that way, too. You could maybe splash and do a little bit of splashy um, uh, washes and maybe make it like a stucco-looking house. But if you want to make it like a clapboard house with some wood siding, this is the way to do it. You just add those lines in there very easily with the... With the uh, needlepoint brush, you know, nice and loose. You don't want to be with a ruler trying to measure everything out. And you don't have to worry about that. You just get in there and get the idea of some lines, and that's all you have to do. And when you step back and look at it, it looks absolutely fine. The only thing we have to do uh, now is add some titanium white and yellow ochre mixed together for some highlights here and there. So we'll come back in about five or ten minutes. We'll let this dry a little bit, and then we'll do those final... A little bit of uh, highlights of light, and we should be 100% complete. Okay, so we'll be right back. You've made it. You're coming back again for more? Come on, come on, let's go, let's keep going. So we have our painting almost 100% complete, but yes, you can always make it better. You can always make your watercolor look better, but there is a point too where you have to stop and say, uh, let's not do too many details. It'll ruin the, the painting, but here we still have some uh, room for improvement and some more details without going overboard, and I'll show you how we're, we're going to do that right now. So, what I'm looking at here is how can I build a little more uh, three-dimensionality to my painting, and I think I can do it. I have an idea of how to do it. Often you might see in some of my paintings that we've done over the years, those of you have or that have you know, been watching for quite a while, I like to add, you know, maybe a tree in there in the foreground to push the painting back. So to push this um, house back into the painting and make it look a little more distant and have 
it feel more like there's more, it's uh, more three-dimensional. You can add some things in the foreground. So we can do that here. And I have some ideas of how to do that that'll look really interesting. So we're going to do that. But it's a surprise, so you have to wait until we get to it. And uh, what else do we have? Some highlights, we said. So let's do our highlights first. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's, do, our, let's do our interesting... Um, fun. I'm using uh, some molding here. This is some just some molding I, I bought at the local bo big box store when I was doing some trim around the house. So you can use this to get a straight line. You can use a ruler also and draw a pencil line. However, using something like a molding or a piece of wood or even a really good sturdy ruler will, will work as well. Uh, we can get a straight line and just paint it right in instead of worrying about drawing it and everything like that. So let's let's do that. So I'm going to take some raw umber, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, and that gives us a pretty good dark. Okay. Now we just we're going to want to say, let's do a clothesline. What a great idea, right? Clotheslines, they can add dimensionality to your painting. So we can use something that's very common that we see all the time in when you look at houses and paintings and things like that um, in artwork. You'll you'll you know see many times that there's clotheslines in the backs of houses, in the backyards, and things like that. So that's something very common. Let's do that to push this. Uh, uh, house back a little bit and where are we going to put that clothesline? Well, we'll make one pole here for the clothesline closer to the door, the back door here, and then we'll make the other one over here a little larger and taller. So let's say, let's do this. Let's add it right here. Maybe. I think that would look good right about there. So I'll go over to this side here. And I'm just going to take this paintbrush, load it up with lots of paint. And then I'm just going to go right down the painting, like that. And that's all we have to do. Then I just make this And I would say we can leave it, we can leave the uh, clothesline, you know, a little bit uh, hit and miss. You don't want to have it I guess what I'm saying is you, you don't have to have it solid the whole way. Leave it, you know, leave some broken bits of uh, paper there, you know. You don't have to, you know, you can just do one right across the paper and that's good. You don't have to worry about getting it exact whatsoever. One line across there, we already know, okay, that's, hmm. then we start thinking, then we want to get our viewers starting to think, what is that? <clears throat> and then we know, well, if we add another one here, let's do that. This one here, we're going to make with a smaller brush and we can also use our ruler or wood trim. Let's use a ruler. We can use a ruler here, like this. Let's do the same thing. We'll make this burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, raw umber. It's going to be smaller in size. It's next to the door. And let's just go upwards and do this. Like that. Okay, now the thing that's going to really make this, you know, something that we know what it is, 100% is some line. So that's all we have to do. We have to put some line, some clothesline here. Let's do it. 
get some water, mix in some, it doesn't have to, be, just a little bit of a darker, you know, medium wash. And then we just have to do a quick little upward like this. So you practice it a few times with your brush. You got, we have our needle point brush here. And we say, okay, the line's gonna go like this, the clothesline. So let's make sure we practice it a few times above the area. And then when we're ready and we feel confident, then we just bang it in. Look at, just like that. There we go. Now, what we will do is add some titanium white and yellow ochre to a few spots here where the dark areas are to highlight that clothesline. Let's see how it works. Okay, we have our yellow ochre already in the white paint. Let's add a little more yellow ochre. Mix that into the top of your paint. No water, don't add water to your brush. Dry your brush before you do this part here. You wanna keep this dry, like you, you just want straight paint with a little bit of yellow ochre in there. You don't wanna have uh, water in the top of your, you wanna keep it dry is what I'm saying. Okay, so now, carefully look at where your brush went across the paper and then find that light line that you went across. Barely visible, but you, I can see it. And then I just do a couple like that. And that's, we call that continuing lines. So if you just touch down a few spots here and there like that, that clothesline appears because we have created a little bit of the light and dark. And then if we want, we can burn umber, French ultramarine blue, raw umber. Let's get a little, you know, we can make a little um, wheel here. Like that. Then we can make our second line. In that second line, we just leave the way it is. Maybe a, a little touch of uh, white paint there. Like that. And we have our clothesline. We have this pole, which is closer to us, which really gives us some really nice three-dimensional feel. And you can make that darker with some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And if you make that darker there, it's going to look even more close to us in the foreground here. Do you see that, how it looks like it's closer? We're making it darker now. Can you see that? That's what you want. Make it darker. And I think we're really, this is fine. You can kind of take a, uh, a, you know, a break now. Let's just do a little more. Let's do some details on the windows. So I'm gonna do a couple. Again, I'm using my yellow ochre and titanium white in the tube. And add a little bit of water to this, maybe.
and some more uh, titanium white. Sometimes just really going fast and doing some really expressive strokes like this is going to look better than trying to like really suffer over the the fine details of something. So that's always a good thing to remember. Don't don't sweat this, the details. Get them in quick. And there you have it. So we have all the details in that we need. Maybe there's a little bit of highlights there on the on the uh, chimneys, the chimney pots. And I think that's pretty good. I think everything looks fine. Maybe a couple small weeds on the, uh, by the poles here. You could add a couple. But this is about it now. Just a few of these kind of details like to try to make this look a little bit closer. You know, in the foreground, if you add some like that, that will look pretty good. Maybe we're going to do a small detail. Maybe a door handle there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can do. Okay, let's uh, figure that this is complete. Maybe I'm thinking one more idea is Titanium white and that yellow ochre. A little bit of water. And then we just do a little bit of splashes like that. Those splashes will mellow out and become way lighter, so you don't have to worry. very sparing though with this type of details like that just a touch okay I hope everyone had a lot of fun doing this this is so much fun it's more of a simple design you know not a lot of angles it's more of a two-dimensional painting for the most part but we added a lot of interest into it to make it real, look really beautiful three-dimensional um, and again, we did the glazing technique, which is great. You just do your first wash, so you get a beautiful unified look to the painting right off from the start. And then from there, you just add on your darker glazings, as we did throughout the painting, and you just get a really beautiful effect when you're actually completed. We'll take the tape off here, and always remember, we're going to put this on the finished painting on the beginning of the video, so you'll be able to work from this finished painting if you want to at the very beginning of the video. And um, I think you'll really have fun with this. It's not difficult, but it is, you know, it takes a couple hours, two, three hours to get through it. You have to let things dry, as you know, um, as we covered in this painting. So we did a tons of detail, tons of methods, techniques. We explained everything, how you do it, one step at a time. And I hope you will try it out at least a couple times, two, three times, until you really get it where you like it and you think it's successful for your level of where you're at in your artwork and I'm going to put this here we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll zoom out and I think that looks good 
We'll see you on the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification bell. This way, you, each time you go onto YouTube, you'll know where we have a new video out and we're painting again and creating new artwork and hope you'll join along. And again, thanks for subscribing and for following my channel. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.